In November, Anne-Marie Trevelyan quit the government over Theresa May's Brexit deal. And in her resignation letter, she raised concerns about the Irish backstop and also the fishing industry. And we're pleased to say that she joins us uh, now. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. So, has the Christmas break made you change your mind? I'm afraid it hasn't, no. Uh, there's been no change to the withdrawal agreement documentation or indeed to the political declaration documentation. So my view still stands at the moment. It just isn't something that as a Brexiteer and someone who believes that we must respect the will of the people through that referendum order that we were given, uh, this doesn't do that. As someone who's quite plugged into you know, the Conservative benches, mm. do you have any uh, in in indication that people are changing their minds? No, not really. It's been really interesting, actually. We've all, you know, chat over Christmas and, uh, you know, keep trying to get our heads around it. We you know we all of us want to uh, leave uh, on the 29th of March with, with a deal, or the, you know, the framework for sorting out the logistics over a transition period, uh, if we possibly can. So you, a no deal is not something you'd like to say? Well, I'd rather not, but I'm also uh, very focused on making sure that preparedness is actually in place. That's been one of the challenges I've been pushing the Prime Minister for a while now, both publicly and privately, to say, are you sure that everything's in place? Uh, because the challenge I get coming back from my constituents, be it uh, the fishing community, as you mentioned, uh, the farming community, small businesses, my constituency has no kind of, you know, big Jaguar Land Rover companies, it has lots of small businesses, some of whom trade with the EU, is the question is, is it ready? And they're saying to me, well, we don't know, we don't know, it's all I know, so no deal's just really scary. But actually, you know, and as some of the civil service articles written recently have shown, the civil service, you know, the best in the world, ours, is preparing. I think the challenge we've got is the Prime Minister has been slow to make sure that businesses know, to try and reduce that fear and anxiety, knowing that, much like the millennium bug crisis, you probably weren't, you know, old enough to remember, but I do, the world was going to end, everything was to get you anywhere. <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, but the reality is that, uh, you know, the civil service is prepared and all those all that can be put in place will be, and businesses need to know that. So I think that's a critical part of, once we get through this week's, uh, you know, noise and fireworks, to actually make sure that businesses do know what's what if they are having EU relationships now. Um, at the same time, though, uh, you're somebody who backed Brexit. Mm. Uh, we just heard from Chris Grayling, the Transport Secretary, uh, who made the point that if you don't back the Prime Minister's deal, then there is a concern uh, among many people uh, who supported Leave that Brexit might not happen, or it will be much, much softer than you would like it to be. I mean, is that, is that not something that you're concerned about? So the reality is that the statute in place at the moment is to leave on the 29th of March, uh, either with an agreed deal, which is what the Prime Minister has been negotiating, or if one can't be reached by then, on a no-deal basis, and then we continue the conversation afterwards, but we will have stepped away from all those EU connections. There's a lot in the withdrawal agreement that's fine. It's, it's like a basket of all the legacy stuff wrapped up in one. So it's much easier if we can do it, you know, in a, in a one big glue. But some of it's just not acceptable because it won't deliver Brexit. But at the same time, though, you know, if you look at the papers today, there's lots of uh, stories uh, in the Sunday Times, for example, mm -hmm. amongst others, about MPs who are absolutely opposed to the idea of a no-deal Brexit, talking about bringing new legislation to stop it happening. Well, you know, that is, that is a great challenge and some of the, you know, the activity we've seen this week in Parliament uh, with, you know, trying to s so dramatically change how Parliament works that everything becomes completely unstable is indeed, as the Prime Minister said herself, you know, into unprecedented and uncharted territory. But that must not stop us from remembering that we, we gave the people a referendum. Now, it's a fairly blunt tool. I don't think any of us would disagree with that. But having done so, if we don't respect the results that they sent back to us, which is an order, it's not a nice idea for us to now continue to discuss. It was a very clear order. We must make sure that we actually leave the EU and the withdrawal agreement as it stands will not do that because of the Irish backstop. So that needs to be something that the Prime Minister goes back to the EU and says, I'm afraid... You know, Parliament says this isn't this isn't acceptable. This is the area of concern. Please can we fix it? We've got you know nearly three months to do that for them to them to decide. This isn't for the Prime Minister. It's not under her control. I think that's the frustration. It's all been kind of dumped on her head. Actually, the EU have to decide whether they are okay with a no deal position on the 29th of March or whether they would rather make some amendments now so that that bulk of the withdrawal agreement, which is absolutely fine, can be put through. OK. Um, I'm interested to talk to you a little bit about the future of the Conservative Party as well, mm. because it's been a really bruising couple of years for your it party. Has. I mean, you've been fighting like cats and dogs there, to be blunt. Uh, you've spoken before about uh, worries about young voters being switched off from the Conservatives and even saying mm. that your own son might not vote for you. <laughs> well, no-one ever let me finish that sentence. Go on, then, I'll let At you finish the time, it. So that was are, you, are you 
you're still worried that he might not vote for you? <laughs> well, I think, I think, you know, probably he would. He can now vote. The problem at the time was he was, he was a few days off being able to vote in the 2017 election. My, the finish of that sentence was because I'm probably not right-wing enough for him. Oh, um, interesting. But, of course, that wasn't, that wasn't chosen. But it's a really, it's a really interesting website. There are an extraordinary number of incredibly focused young people uh, interested in politics. I think the challenge they've had is to try to uh, get to grips with They're arriving into politics at this monumental point and at this point where we're using a tool that is, you know, used very, very rarely, perhaps just as well, the referendum, and trying to understand uh, what it means. So if, if having used a referendum which is a direct order rather than normal politics, which is you elect your MP and then you let them, you know, make their judgment. And if you don't like the way they make judgments, you chuck them out the next time round. Um, the reference something else. So they're, they're caught in this trying to understand what normal politics might look like alongside this dramatic and indeed huge but also question. The Conservative Party itself does not look good at the minute, does it? Well, I think, that, I think all parties are on a state of huge flux. The Labour Party is equally, you know, split in the way, uh, you know, it's trying to find how it goes forwards with a, you know, a very hard left core sitting on the front bench and all you know, those who have been, if you like, the wisdom and the experience of the Labour Party for the last 30 years sitting behind them on the backbenches. I think that's in both cases. And maybe it reflects you know, the fact that this is, is having a referendum generates huge political energy and we must make sure that we harness it carefully uh, and that it goes forwards so that our country can do as well as it can. OK, thank you uh, very much.